Hi, this is Rick. Welcome to the Chroma Genie basic tutorial. We'll get started just doing a few simple things with the defaults that have been provided by Chroma Genie. As you can see, I've opened up Chroma Genie here, and just for reference, over on this side, you'll see that I have opened Explorer, and I want you to pay attention to the converted folder, and I'll be talking about another folder in the uh, this area here in just a few minutes. And in later tutorials, you'll be learning a bit more about the backgrounds and what those are all used for. So the first thing we can do and should do is go pick up an image. And that image, in terms of the default Chroma Genie, is going to be in the Images folder. You can see there's two images here, both a portrait and a landscape. And you're going to see what happens to that one portrait. You can do two things. You can press F5 to load an image or you can go over here and do a select image and it looks by default into the images folder. You can change that later. Let's go ahead and choose the landscape image. I'll click once and say open or you could double click and you'll see how quickly it removed the green screen and it inserted the first landscape image. Now the first thing we should notice is that the image itself is far too too far to the right. You can click and hold the left mouse button and as you see as you hover over it tells you what you can do. I'm going to hold that and I'm going to bring it over about like this. Okay and seeing that we're talking about resizing I have two ways I can use the mouse wheel. You notice I'm doing it and it is getting smaller and I'm going the other way it's getting larger or you can use the magnifying glasses for the plus sign. And again, it's too far over, so I'll bring it up and set it back down. There we go. Now, you can easily change backgrounds by clicking, and you would preload these backgrounds so that these backgrounds would be the ones that you want for the, uh, the session that you're having in terms of maybe it's going to a school and you're shooting uh, baseball scenes or you're shooting basketball scenes, you could have different backgrounds and uh, at least up to four with this particular version based upon the shoot that you're doing. And again, I can just click and we can see that this has changed and by the way, you also see that the converted image is over here ready for printing. Let's go select one more image because this is pretty neat. You'll notice that it's a portrait image but it's being laid flat as in background so you would think that that wouldn't work. I'll double click it and it automatically reorients that background. It automatically takes and puts a this in this case the number two portrait image and again you can see the changes in the various backgrounds. The final thing in this basic tutorial is your ability to print because that'd make the most sense of the next thing to do so we go to printing and you can see that you have options here, full page, uh, what type of uh, paper that you're using, letterhead, or whatever size that you may want here, uh, the, the quality in dots per inch. You can also change and go to 5x7s. You can say I want two images on my 5x7, which does that. And of course there are other options here, uh, all the way down to contact sheet or even wallet size, and you would change this to nine and you'll pick up all nine pictures. We'll cancel this for now. Okay that's the basic getting started. We'll move on and in our next tutorial do some other things which you'll find most, uh, most interesting and a lot of fun.